What's going on guys? I'm over here at Benji Kitty Park. I'm about to walk over to Osok. So we're just gonna walk straight down Sukhumvit to Osok. A lot of traffic right now because it's getting close to rush hour. We'll check that out. And we're gonna end up right across the street from Terminal 21 at my favorite fabric shop. So I'll take you guys with me. And while we're walking, I wanna talk about how you can problem solve like an engineer, why you should problem solve like an engineer and use that similar methodology or at least why it works for me. So let's go. All right, guys, here we go. Leaving Benjaseri Park and we are headed over to Osok where we're gonna end up right across the street from Terminal 21 in front of my favorite fabric shop. And we're gonna talk about problem solving like an engineer. Why that's, at least in my opinion, a good methodology or a good practice, why it works for me and why I think it's something that you should think about developing in your skill set. It doesn't mean you have to be an engineer, but think about the way that engineers solve problems and why that might work for you in what you do every day. It might be a little noisy on this trip, guys. There's quite a few, quite a bit of traffic. Like I said, we're close to rush hour. Ben Benjaseri Park, beautiful park, great time. Beautiful shots of the city. Yeah. You know, thinking about problem solving, problem solving like an engineer. So what, what does that mean? And I think about methodologies. Being an engineer is all about methodology, all about applying systems and frameworks and methodologies to the problems you're either fixing you're trying to solve or the things you're building. And even as a designer, I found that my background as an engineer, you know, my, my engineering degrees, my experience as an engineer have helped me in design a great deal. Well, I gotta, if I get to click on my watch here to record my walk, <laughs> I want credit for my exercise, damn it. So thinking about thinking about problem solving as an engineer, what does that mean? So I'll bring it back to the fundamental framework that I learned when I took a circuits class as an undergrad and what that meant, what, what that did for me. And what I did was you learn, the professor talks you through cutting the problem in half, right? Constantly bisecting it to see what side of the circuit your problem is on. So say you have a short and you have multiple devices. So you have seven devices. You're gonna cut that in half and right in the middle, the middle device, you're gonna check both sides for the short and whichever side shorts, you're gonna go down that side because you know that's where the problem is. Then you're gonna cut that in half again and you're gonna check both sides of that device in the circuit and see which side it's on. And just continue to follow that methodology. That is a very, very solid way, a very solid methodology to solve problems, to figure out what's wrong with something. Now, of course, you know, that, that's applying to a very physical object you know, a network or a circuit or a physical distribution plant, you have that potential to physically cut things in half. Now, when you're working on design issues or creative problems, it's not quite as black and white. It's not quite as clear. And the same thing could be said for business issues trying to solve a business continuity issue or a business model issue that you can't just cut it in half and see which side it works on, which side it doesn't. That's not a possibility in those situations, but you can still apply the same logic. And, and let me talk about that because it maybe isn't 100% clear when you think about it, but the reality is that the reality is to look at a problem, 
you can still break it down into pieces. Now, something that's more esoteric, that's more abstract, obviously you can't cut it in half and troubleshoot one side or the other like you could a short in a circuit, right? But from a design perspective, if I'm working on a design and it's just not working, let's say I'm making a, I'm designing a pair of pants, a pair of jeans, and I want to do something a little bit different and what, for whatever reason, it's not working quite right. It just doesn't feel right. It doesn't look right. What I can do, instead of looking at the jeans as a whole and assessing the issue, I'll look at them on a piece by piece basis. How does the yoke look? You know, is something, something wrong with the yoke? Is there something wrong with the rear panels, the front panels, the waistband? Let me double check my measurements. Does everything look uh, lined up accordingly? Right, I'll break it down to its individual parts and start to see where the issue is or what might be leading to the issue and what small changes can I make somewhere that might affect something else further up or further down the design. Same thing with a t-shirt design. I may, I may look at it and it doesn't feel quite right to me. It doesn't feel quite finished. It doesn't feel quite dialed in. So what will I do? I'll, I'll step back and I'll look at it and I'll say, okay, let me look at the color palette. How does this look on the color wheel? Okay, let me look at the symmetry. You know, let me look at the texture and I'll, I'll look at all these different pieces of it to try to figure out what I can change that, that will bring it together. Now, I'm not saying it's gonna be one of those things necessarily, but it's breaking it down into segments that helps me look at the problem in a, in a different way, as opposed to looking at it holistically. Like, okay, here's the overall design. Why doesn't it look right? Uh, I don't know, and just randomly try things. I break it out one piece, one section, one element at a time, and I evaluate it, and I try to make iterative change, little changes and see what I think. Or maybe something speaks to me specifically and I can dial it in just a little bit better. What do we have here? So it's about, it's about making those changes, figuring out what will have the biggest impact with the least amount of change. And I find that breaking out the individual elements and looking at it from that perspective works really well for me. And it's very similar in my mind to the, the half methodology I learned as an engineer. And actually I use that, that half methodology as something I use uh, countless times as a technician, as an engineer throughout my career with great success. And if you apply it right and you understand the tools at your disposal, you can often fix a problem pretty quick. And when I see those halves, I see that as the basic fundamental elements of a problem, those pieces of the circuit. Now, of course, design, like I said, design is a little different. Design is design's much more abstract for the most part. When I do design, I'm not doing color by numbers. I'm not some guy who just rips off other people's designs and slaps them together and doesn't care about fixing them. I want everything to be perfect. And I think most of you guys who watch this channel, who follow Idea Studio are the same way. When you do something, you want it to be done right. You want to do it right and you want to fix it. And having a good methodology to get there is important and I've always, I may be a little biased as an engineer myself, but I've always thought that worked really well, especially for me. This is a house back behind here, right on Sukhumvit, it's kind of wild. So what do you guys use for your problem solving methodology or do you break things in half? Have any of you guys learned that sort of having the problem having the circuit methodology as an engineer? I know a bunch of you guys who subscribe, who leave comments are engineers. So you may very well be in the same 
in the same boat. I don't know. But for me, <laughs> that was always the go-to method. Oh, right, here's a, I think this is one of the, yeah, Suzuki Carry, set up as a little song towel. Hurry up and scoot across there. These are cool trucks, kind of short. I always thought they were a little longer. Maybe this is a shorter version. That's from Novatel. That's the truck that uh, Mike and I were talking about that he should maybe like build his BKK.FM studio in. Gives him the opportunity to basically go anywhere. Never say cuts. Never say cuts, but it's a haircut place. I don't know what's going on. I'm bald anyway. I don't need to have haircuts. The fat cow. So from that perspective, guys, problem solving methodology. How do you go about it? What do you do? Now, I'd love to hear some of the methodology that you guys put in place. Especially, I'd love to hear from some of you guys who are also content creators. When you're working on an edit, what methodology do you use to, to troubleshoot any problems you might have with your footage or with your edit, to massage it, to fix it? Or what process do you put in place even to build it? Do you build start to end? Do you build middle out? I'd be curious to find out. Sometimes with my edits, I end up having an issue where something doesn't quite work. And I pull that individual element out and, and tweak it or change it or try some other things. Sometimes it works, sometimes it does not. A lot of people walking around here. Quite a busy day out there. It's a Friday, I'm filming this. Out in the bang of cock. The cockety cockety bang. Quite a nice spot out though. Sook 18 hostel. Over there. Oh, I, I think I know that guy who just zipped by on the red Vespa. I think I know him. So guys, this is probably my second favorite coffee shop in all of Bangkok, Artis. Very, very good coffee. Nice pour over, usually a really good selection. It's over here on Sukhumvit 18. Second only to Gallery Drip Coffee in the BACC. Or BCCA? Oh. BACC, Bangkok Art and Cultural Center. Gallery Drip is on the first level. Hands down, best coffee in Bangkok, in my opinion. Pour over, they always have great selections. They're the most likely to have a yeast process coffee as well, which I love. To me, nothing beats a yeast processed as far as just flavor and overall robustness. If I'm gonna have just a, a one-off a one-off pour over somewhere because I don't usually drink pour over. You guys might know I'm a French press guy. So if I'm going out, I'm going to have something very different from my home coffee, which is a wet, wet processed Arabica from Northern Thailand. So if I'm going to indulge, it might be like a yeast processed Ethiopian. A cool little adventure mini setup. Huh. Luggage rack on top, <laughs> that's cute. So yes, that is my, my troubleshooting process, guys. Middle out, chop the problem in the middle, figure out which side the problem's on, move to that side. Rinse and repeat until you find the issue and fix it. And the way I translate that to design, like I said, is I look at the problem and I break it into its individual elements. And then I look at those elements and I make a change and see how that ripples through the rest of the design. It's more about being granular with it than it is that middle out methodology, but it still works very much the same. 
Here's the not world-renowned Stam Ford University here in Bangkok. Stam Ford. Not to be confused with Stanford, but still, there it is, ground level of that building. And here we are in Aso, this is the intersection. I'm gonna take my life in my hands and try to make it across. Oh, this lady over here has one of these little electric bikes. I think it's called a Dolphin. I saw it on Lazada. This is Exchange Tower, guys. Quite nice. All right, here we go. Saunter through here. And I'll cut this way so we can take a peeky peek at the electric bike. Yeah, it looks similar to the one I saw online. Now this is gonna be a challenge. Jib is not a fan of me attempting to cross the road ever. So hopefully she won't watch this far in the video. But by this point, she may have already seen my, my video about, oh God, where I cross the con and walk on the concrete beam. So I could be dead by the time this video comes out if she's already seen the clown video. Very likely that she beat me to death. All right, looks like, oh, no, not able to do it yet. Takes a long time to be able to cross here. Oh, maybe I'll follow suit with this lady. We'll cross, like, we'll do the little halfway thing. That way I don't have to traverse the entirety of the soy in one go. That's always nice to get a little reprieve. Wow, is that a Rolls Royce? That is a Rolls Royce. Smack in the middle of Bangkok. Nice white Rolls Royce. Looks like a newer one. Ooh. Well, we can see up here, guys, that the this is the sky bridge from Aso, BTS. You can see the centric ramp from Terminal. And we have a little green guy to walk across. Uh, here we go. And if I walked down this way, that would be Benjikitty Park. Oh, here's a Honda Super Cub. The most sold vehicle in the world. Honda Super Cub. I think they've been making it for like 60 years and sold over, over 100 million. And here is one of my absolute favorite fabric shops in all of Thailand. This one's right in Aso. It's called like Hoi Kwa something something. It's a Chinese name. Really famous shop though, a lot of people know it, not secret at all, but it has a really great selection of fabric. I'm just gonna jaunt across real quick. Let's see, I think they have the name in English here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Hang Yo Hu. Hang Yo Hu is the name of this fabric shop. Hang Yo Hu. 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 Maybe it's what? So that's it guys. And then right across the street here is the greatest pizza place in Bangkok, Pala Pizza, right under Asok BTS. And I'm probably gonna meet up with Jib here in Asok in a little bit. So while I wait for her, I will go across and get myself maybe one or two slices of marinara if they're not too busy and wait for Jib. So guys, thanks for rocking with me. Until next time, keep taking action. Make your ideas reality.